at here is a radar simulation. It is not live, but a simulation of air traffic being vectored for an approach into this airport right here. There's Newark International. Quick look up here. There you see Newark and the runway configuration. When's the last time you've had your mind boggled? Today, about 11 seconds. Be one of those 11 seconds. Oh, why did the Air France land on there? Yeah, okay. But this is going to be the day. I have to prepare you for what you're about to hear. Descend and maintain a certain altitude. Fly or turn to a heading. He's going to give a number. Reduce airspeed. He's going to give another number. You ready to repeat that? No. Mm -hmm. How about this way? Join the localizer. Send that, please. Join the localizer. Don't forget that. Let's listen. Okay. Who's one two zero? Oh, here we go. Thirty three eleven flying one nine zero. Join the localizer. Did you hear that? The pilot didn't repeat it. Controller says it again. Like thirty three eleven heading one nine zero to join the localizer. Join the localizer. Next time you're going to say it. Did you hear that? Descend and maintain three. Northwest seven ninety two flying zero eight zero. Fly a heading of zero eight zero. Ready. Three things. Repeat all that, please. Did you hear that one? Reduce speed 180 knots. Okay, hold your questions till the end. Everybody, watch the screen. Here's proof that it's a simulation. So it's just starting. We're going to concentrate on this aircraft right here. Can everyone see Continental 260 at the top? Number on the lower left, altitude. 4,000 feet, last two zeros dropped, MD-80, type of aircraft, 26, ground speed or track on the ground in knots. Get ready now, 260 knots. Get ready for the first command the controller is going to say, easiest one to understand, I'm hoping you'll repeat. Here we go. What did he say? Descend and maintain three. Beautiful. Listen to this one. Feeling like 3311, descend and maintain 4,000. Descend and maintain 4,000. Beautiful. I'll take this one. Uh, Continental's 4862 heavy, flooding 150 to send to 5,000. Fly a heading and descend. Listen for the last of three. Here we go. Continental 260 heading 190, join the localizer. Oh, did you hear that? The last thing he said? What was it? Join the localizer. Sorry, you got it. What's the localizer? You see this line? This line represents an invisible highway in the sky. It sends out an electronic radio signal the pilot's been told to join. That's the localizer. Now, in just a second, he's going to call out to JetLink 3311 and then say three incredibly Jet fast things. Now, last of three things. Last of three. Channel 265 from the out of three to establish Clint Alice 22 left approach. Last thing he said, anyone? That two just left approach. Beautiful, cleared ILS instrument landing system. Two two left approach. Now he's been told do more than just join that line. Visualize a funnel. Now he's been told to fly right down the center of that invisible highway. You with me? Once the controller sees he's established. Count two sixty. Contact the Newark Tower one eight point three. Piece of cake. What did he say? Oh, wow, you got the frequency. Contact the Newark Tower on a frequency of 118.3. Why? Controller sees he's established on the localizer. Now he wants to hand it off to the link in the chain. In this case, please remember, control tower. He's switching frequencies now and announcing Newark Tower. Continental 260 is with you on final everybody. What are those three words that every pilot loves to hear? The tower is going to say back to you, and you are clear to land. Aren't those lovely words clear to land? But approach is going to keep him on the screen till he gets to that tiny little circle. Anyone ever heard of the outer marker? Yes. Outer marker. There's a pilot right there. At that point, he's less than five miles from the end of the runway. If it's a gorgeous day out like today, the guy in the tower can look up and see the aircraft. He'll probably clear it for what kind of approach? Visual. Visual approach, definitely a pilot. Watch this as 260 flies over that outer marker. He is over it right now. Finally, approach is going to drop him from his screen. He no longer belongs to approach control. Who does he belong to now? Either approach or tower. Just not approach. Either Who's tower or ground. Which one? Ground. Tower first. Tower, yes, indeed. Answer my question.
Be more clear. I said, who's he talking to? Security. So he'll stay with him until he lands. The tower will tell him to make a right turn in the next taxiway. Now contact. Ground control. Well, yeah, you are there. One to one point. Seven or nine, you're always good on one of those two. That's okay. five. Okay. Oh, very good. What's 121.5? Guard. Guard frequency or emergency. They'll lead him right to the gate. I'm almost through. Safe, orderly, very efficient. That's our air traffic control system. Do me a favor. Everyone, please say, wow. Wow. And that's so loud. I want some questions about air traffic control. So they're listening, one pilot's listening to the commands given to the LDL. Okay, please note, you see the A's here? Just those white A. These are the only aircraft we're listening to. So the last guy in line hears what the first guy hears, which is why they know what they're going to be told. A lot of it's anticipation. Now here, note, please, there's a P right here. You see that? Second controller talking with those three. And then another controller is talking with the C's. Remember my hands? The uh, handoff procedure. So P is, a C is going to hand off to P. P eventually is going to hand off to A. A is going to hand off to the tower. More questions? Oh my God. Please do keep in mind, folks, the next time you fly, that there are people who work in windowless rooms just like this. Their only job, keep you safe in the skies. Please, uh, the pilot's not going to like this, but please refresh my memory. What are these guys called? They're called air traffic. They control the flight. Pilot just flies that big hot dog. <laughs> No question. On the other hand, he has a lot more interest in what's going on than the guy in the window of this room. Oh, no, sir. The guy, the guy in this room is keeping you safe. I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any questions? So please. But you do mind. have a bit bigger interest. New York is a bigger international airport. Oh, it is a very busy international airport that relieves some of the congestion. Oh, my gosh. Then. Because most everybody from New Jersey tells us, yeah, we see the cars, uh, the, the airplanes right up over 95. And that's coincidental, by the way. Okay, but it relieves some of the pressure from JFK and LaGuardia. Absolutely. And plus, are you familiar with Teterboro? Yes. That's another very busy airport. And again, the business jets are encouraged to land there instead of going to uh, Newark. Newark is a very busy airport. Oh, you flew to Japan. Oh, I hate Newark. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's the three-letter identifier you're flying it in? What's that? Newark. What is the three-letter identifier on your luggage tag? For Newark? For Newark. I don't know. I only transit Newark. Oh, really? Okay. E-W-R. <laughs> E-W-R. E-W-R. You have to fly in there to know that. What's JFK? JFK. What's LaGuardia? A L G A. L G A, very good. Okay. Do <laughs> you have any idea what Teterboro is? No. That's T E B. T E B. What is O'Hare? O R D. What does it stand for? Uh, nope. No, 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 no. Garden. Um, oh, it's a flower. Yeah. Something garden, I forgot. No, no, it's Orchard Douglas. Yeah, that's what was the name of it. Oh, yeah. really? Who's it named after? Right now, Butch O'Hare. And who was Butch O'Hare? World War II, Navy, Ace Pilot. Ace oh, Pilot. Okay. Very impressive. Who was his dad? Oh, yeah. Who was his dad? <laughs> he was a crook. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Don't remember. Uh, Fast Eddie O'Hare. Yeah, right. And who did he work for? <laughs> Al Capone. Al Capone. Yeah. He was a lawyer for Al Capone. Yeah. Wow. I'll have to remember That's that name. Very yes. impressive. <laughs> My grandson it was getting Orchard his wings Park. in two weeks. No, Orchard Douglas, O-R-D. Yes. It was an Air Force yes. base. Are you from Chicago? Born and raised there. I gave tours of Chicago for 13 years. Really? It's Orchard yeah. Douglas. Tour with him. Look it up. I am. I am. Oh, no problem. I'm not worried. It's Orchard <laughs> Douglas, O-R-D. But you and, you and I are the only two people in this whole real life. Oh, well, but nobody knows that. You've got to be an aviation geek to know that. <laughs> My, my grandson and their cousins getting his wings in two weeks. Oh, Air Force fighter plane. Oh, oh my gosh! Wow, that's great. Here you go. 
Is that him calling? Yes, but the others are on a tour, so why don't we send them up here and try that? Please tell him thank you for his service. Okay, we'll be right down. Yeah, please say to your, your grandson, thank you for his service. Thank you. Thank you for yours. Oh, my God. <laughs> Could you explain the uh, different oh, explain. The, uh, oh, slots and all? Oh, right here. These are called flight strips. Approximately 20 to 25 minutes before an aircraft appears on the control screen, a flight strip is going to print out at the facility where I work. It's, there's a machine that prints it out automatically. You're quite welcome. So we can anticipate when the aircraft is going to come on the screen. And it has critical information, the uh, flight identification, the type of aircraft. Uh, this is a computer-generated number. This is his, uh, oh my gosh, that's his squawk code and where he's going to enter the screen at SAX. And that's his altitude, which is obviously incorrect here. <laughs> he's on the ground at that point. Very nicely done. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Cool. Great. This is what you wanted?